Combat will be under confined conditions via dampening restraints. Target is one aim splatoon with no weapon restrictions. Hey, Cosmos, can you do it? It is not a problem, Xion. I guess this level of combat exercise was too easy, huh? <sighs> Give it a rest already, Chief. We have enough data to submit our report to the bridge now. I'm terminating this encephalon dive. Sound good? Go ahead. I don't understand. Why didn't you use the external monitoring system? You can't blame me for wanting to see Cosmos in action with my own eyes. Hey, Chief, if I'm not mistaken, you're supposed to deliver your report to the bridge a ASAP. Uh, yes, so I better hurry and finish things up here. I'll take care of it. Just finish your report and then try to get some rest, okay? That would be great, Alan. You don't mind taking care of things for me? No, not at all. All right, see you later. And good luck, okay? Right, now we're going to combine the data from each monitoring system, so hurry up and submit your info. She really has you trained, hasn't she, Deputy Chief? Know what I'm saying? Huh? What are you talking about? Just get your data together. Yeah, I'm doing it. No need to get all embarrassed. What did you just say? I said nothing, sir. You're just hearing things. Yes? What is it? Pardon. I know I'm new around here, and this may sound forward, but... You think we should speed things up and get to the actual testing. Am I correct? Well, there's only so much you can learn from simulations. I know there was an accident a couple of years ago, but... Hey! It's okay. I understand how he feels. There was an accident. A lot of researchers working on Cosmos were killed when it went out of control. Chief Uzuki was there and saw it all happen. I heard her boyfriend was one of the unlucky researchers. The Chief knows better than anybody what Cosmos is capable of and how dangerous it is. All of her decisions are based on that. And? Way too slow! Give me another hundred million push-ups! Don't stop until your triceps snap like rubber bands! You heard me when I told you that thing was dangerous, didn't you? And still, we lost a man because you had to be so damn careless! Isn't that... But Lieutenant Commander, the fleet's objective was to investigate the planet that Gnosis attacked! Why would we get on a reconnaissance mission? It didn't make sense to us! Use your muscles instead of that ten-cent head of yours! You don't get paid to think, got it? Crap that you're Vector's chief engineer. This is off limits to you. 
Get the hell out of here! My men will start slacking off if they see bimbos like you around. I'm so sorry! That was a grave mistake, Andrew. I already warned you about the dangers of finding and retrieving the Zohar. Do I need to remind you how valuable the agents we've placed inside the military are? I'm afraid there is no excuse. We picked up local UMN activity on our EPR radar system. According to our calculations, they'll cross your vector in 5 hours 22 minutes. Don't tell me it's the Gnosis! I told you, you made a grave mistake! We've dispatched a unit for the sake of insurance. Keep it safe at all costs. Will they make it in time? They should, but prepare for the worst. That is all. Commander, wait! Commander Morgulis! Update report. The engine is operating in stealth mode. Commander Cherinkov. Pardon my lateness, Captain. Don't apologize, we were just finishing up. Here, please take a look for yourself, Commander. Thank you. This is all we have on Cosmos? Lieutenant, I'll take over for you now. Half-watch will continue for another three hours. Ah, oh, thanks. The column's pulse data is already updated. Understood. That Realian, it's a 100 series observational unit. What's the meaning of this? We still don't have any field data. What's the point of having a weapon if you don't use it? But some of the systems are still unstable. We can't allow your timidity to cause these kinds of delays when mankind is facing an unprecedented threat like the Gnosis. At this very moment, we live with the knowledge that our fleet will encounter them, but we do not know when. Cosmos is our anti-Gnosis weapon, and we keep playing around instead of using it. There you go, Commander. We have the eggs and a 100 series observational unit on board. I assure you that the days of our being at the mercy of an enemy with our obsolete weaponry are in the past, Commander. Not to mention, the fleet is traveling between two columns. The odds of contact with the Gnosis is statistically low, sir. That's where we stand. Vector's engineers simply need more time to get their work done. You have to be a little more understanding, sir. <laughs> we don't have that kind of time. In five hours, this fleet will be annihilated. I'm sorry, but it seems like ever since you began working for Vector, you... Uzuki, seems we always need your help here. No problem. I don't mind because I want all Realians to be healthy and happy. We are short on maintenance staff, so the malfunctions really start piling up down here. Humans accumulate a great deal of stress over the course of long journeys. Not surprisingly, it's the same for artificial life forms, too. Take this for example the relationship between action and intent. The sector that governs the difference between objective versus subjective awareness is out of balance. Ah. Oh. I just made some adjustments. Feel good? I cannot express it appropriately, but I feel like some weight has been lifted. Everything looks the same, but it feels a bit brighter now. Thank you very much for that. Good. You should be fine now. Wow, providing Realian psych support while developing Android software. I don't know how you find the time or energy, but I'm really impressed. To be totally honest, I always wanted to work on Realians in the third division. Actually, I'm considering requesting a transfer once my current work's finished here. Hi there. You're a 100 series Realian? Hmm? <laughs> you like bunny? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that makes two of us then. 
Um, pardon me, but you seem worried about something. <sighs> I'm not hooked up to the monitor. I don't need a monitor. I see it on your face. I'm a mass-produced anti-gnosis realian, Chief Engineer. I don't need to think about anything but orders. Maybe so, but nobody just thinks about what they need to do. Nor should realians. You've been given free will just the same as us. I don't need to do what I'm about to do, but I'll do it anyway. Here, but... but... Don't worry about it. I'll still have this one. Mm -hmm. It reeks in here, as always. Lieutenant Virgil? If I try, but I can't get the rotten odor out of my system. Come on, can't you smell it too, Doc? I should be immune, but it makes me sick to my stomach. One more reason I can't stand these freaks. That's enough, Lieutenant. Your duty specifically includes mutual support between eggs pilots and combat realians. Yeah, that's a sweet theory. But you really think we can count on these things in a fight? Um... Excuse me, but you should know by now that these people are highly skilled fighters. These people? Don't tell me you're treating equipment like people now. You really shouldn't say things like that. You need to understand that these people have the same intellect and emotions as us. And the Milshan Charter clearly spelled out the basic human rights of reality. Uh, what a load of crap. Makes me want to puke. That uniform. You work for Vector, right? You act noble and preach about humanity, but in the end, they're just equipment as far as your company's concerned. Or maybe, more like merchandise. That's not true. We don't treat them anything like equipment or merchandise. Easy to say. But then why do you categorize them as combat or observational grade? How much more evidence do you need than that? That's... What do you want? It is as you say, sir. We are manufactured as merchandise by the Vector Corporation. However, I take great pride in what I do as anyone would. And this pride was not forced upon me in my programming. It is of my own free will, sir. Your free will? <laughs> Have fun pretending you're just like a human. Just remember this. Humans only retain their humanity when things are calm and happy. If they're lucky. But you realians. <sighs> Just wait until we're in an extreme situation. That's when you're gonna learn the hard way what your position on the food chain really is. Ugh. The alarms! What's happening up there? What set off a warning signal? They've come. We're detecting a large-scale spatial distortion ahead of us. An enormous mass is gating out at 12 o'clock. But we're still outside the column area. Our readings show that the UMM geodesic structure is being breached, sir. No, look! The target, it seems to be interacting with the UMN somehow. Massive gravity fluctuations. Surface anomalies are forming in space-time. Impossible. That defies all laws of physics. Computing mass. Numbers are completely inconsistent. I can't get a clear reading. Whatever it is, it's huge. The amplitude! Oh my god, it's like a tidal wave! The readings are increasing! It's entering normal space! Captain! Captain. It's straight ahead, look! It's the Gnosis! Observation unit. It's heading straight to the bridge now, sir. Hurry, damn it! Y009, C735. Send reinforcements immediately. Repeat. Get those useless aims out of here! Eggs, second division. Engage the enemy. Split them up and take them down. 
Listen up. The Gnosis ships materialize into real space in a cycle. That's the only time they're vulnerable to your weapons. Use your DSSS and don't miss that opportunity. Roger. Simple-minded insects are ever drawn to the light. While you hold the Sohar, you'll never enjoy a moment's rest. Now then, the time for me to ascend the stage is well at hand. Chief! Come in, please! Come in, answer me. It's just no use. I can't get through to her. Please, head for the escape pods immediately. Togashi, issue the evacuation order. But what about you? There's still something I have to do. The sick bay is just up ahead. I'm fine. Please, don't let me slow you down. Yes, but... <gasps> Gnosis! Attention, all ships! The Gnosis have infiltrated the fleet. Be on extreme alert! Oh, no! What is that thing? Oh, my God! No! Attention all civilians! Begin emergency evacuation procedures immediately! Jeez, I can't believe there's so much traffic on the LPS. Where are you, Chief? Accessing this. Cosmos? Cosmos? Strains seem to be working right. It's the chief. It found her. It's impossible.
this when I didn't activate it. Protected subject detected and vital signs confirmed. Immediate assistance is required and initiated. Nothing about your own pain, concerned only with the welfare of another. So beautiful. Oh no, he's here. Can't you heal my pain? The pain in my heart from being abandoned by you. What has my wayward little doll been doing in this dreary place, huh? Don't tell me you've become infatuated with these things. No, she's just... If I take her life, would that finally bring you back to me? If you saw her crimson flesh, would the sight of her weakness make you regret running away from me? You don't have to do this, if that's all you're trying to accomplish. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> you're a far more valuable prize than the Zohar. You're all the same form of imitation and your appearance will deceive him. dangerous here. I will now take you to an evacuation pod. Hold on! Someone was with me! Unfortunately, there are no other signs of life detected in the area. destroyed in the battle. Logic drive is down. Engine output is down to 45%. In my 
Emergency core shut down. Switch to reserves on the double. Wait! Engine room unresponsive. Our commands don't seem to be getting through at all. Updated field report. Egg's losses have exceeded 70%. Where's Cherenkov? What happened to our first officer? LPS overload! I can't locate him! Just as I thought. No question. Those damn Gnosis want to get their hands on the Zohar! Defensive perimeter has been breached by the Gnosis! Bastards! What? What do you mean the bridge was destroyed? Let it go. Always remember, our chief allegiance is to you, Tick, not the Galaxy Federation, Commander. Do you understand me? Yes. Status. We've linked to the main field generator, sir. It'll only hold for three minutes, but we'll control the output. Bypass to the logic drive secured, Commander. You can take control from this terminal now. That's fine. Good work, men. Commander, I object. Purging this block and attempting a gate jump? It's suicide, sir! Objection noted. But all that matters is that we get this to Commander Margulies. That is all. There's no time. Get in the pod and evacuate. But, Commander, I... Hurry up. That's a direct order. Stay alive. We still have undeployed life pods aboard this ship, gentlemen. No one withdraws until evacuation is complete. We got movement! be able to take you the rest of the way. I hope you can forgive me for this. Open fire! You're out of danger, so quit your whining, huh? That thing was built to protect humans, so that's what it did! Look what you did! Sir, these readings are off the charts! My God, Hornst! Tortured cries of the dead are so loud they're bursting my eardrums. <laughs> but you will sing a much better song, capricious one. <laughs> Drop her, you bastard! No! Die. What's 
this girl doing here? Not safe there. Run! Run away! It's no use. My voice... Oh well, I'm going to die anyway. Look, we gotta get off the ship right away. Everyone else is either evacuated or dead. How's she do it? The Hilbert effect materializes the Gnosis and makes them vulnerable. Don't the Kirchwasser Reallians have that too? Xion. Yes? We'll now proceed to Hangar 1 quickly. There's a 99.998% probability that the Gnosis target is the object stored in that hangar, which my database says is the Zohar. My assigned duties are to verify and preserve the integrity of the Zohar, and to protect the Vector staff members. Who gave you assigned duties? I will now break through these Gnosis so we can get to the hangar without trouble. Please be ready to move. Now the enemies have been exterminated. We better go. Uh, okay. I don't get it. Why can't I purge this block? I know I didn't make any mistakes. Protection of the valued object has failed. There is one remaining life pod docked at the end of this duct. Huh? Hey! From this departure point, there is a 75.4% probability of survival. Hey, that's just another way of saying 24.6 of us are going to. Whoa! But what will you do once we leave, Cosmos? I'll continue my assigned duty using the Case B strategy. We really have no time for this. Case B? Xion. The ship will be destroyed shortly. What? Later.
Yes. I have confirmed that the target object was not the original Zohar. Yes. It was an emulator. Roger. Upon deploying tracking device, I'll depart immediately. As originally planned, I'll head for second Milsha and make contact. All of them... All of them are dead now. Stand it. I don't want to see any more people die with this in the accident. sign of any nearby ships either, right Hammer? Yep, yep. From what I can see, we're the only ship within a 5,000 light year radius. All right. That should be enough, fellas. We got time, so let's grab anything that looks salvageable. You know, Captain, I realize the deadline for paying back Master Guinan is right around the corner, but don't you think this is a little risky, even by our standards? If the Feds find us out, we'd be lucky to get 10 years for what we're doing. Yeah, you're right. But that's if they find out. Well, right. What I'm trying to say is I just don't like the idea of feeding off the dead. I mean, what are we, space jackals all of a sudden or something? Or maybe vultures or laughing hyenas? <laughs> you moron, what kind of a metaphor is that? They're all extinct animals, Mr. Matthews. Yeah, and we're environmentally friendly space recyclers. Master Guinan told us to stay away from any side jobs, remember, Captain? He said it hurts the Foundation's image. I don't know about that. What's this? Looks like we got a wrecked ship here at 3 o'clock. Looks like a Ganymede class, too. Nice work there, Tony. Good thing we were tapping into the UMN emergency channel when we were. Come on, pull in close, hurry. Yep, yep. We're vultures, all right. What was that? Huh? Whoa! A body. Hey, not only that, it's a girl body. She might be cute, you know? <laughs> oh! Please open your communications line now. I need to speak with you all. Frequency 2020. Oh, it's a talking corpse! You moron, this ain't a corpse or a ghost or whatever. Must be some kind of cyborg weapon or something. Hey. This is Captain Matthews of the Tramp Freighter Elsa. You mind telling me? I will make this brief, gentlemen. From this moment on, the navigation of this ship will be carried out according to my direct instructions. Ah! I will make this brief, gentlemen. From this moment on, the navigation of this ship will be carried out according to my direct instructions. Is that so? Yeah, keep dreaming, sweetheart. We're in the middle of a job. And my time is limited as well. If you fail to comply with my wishes, I will destroy this window. Hey, go ahead. Give it a try. The Elsa's front window can withstand direct hits from debris of any kind as big as six millimeters. I make this proposal with goodwill. I could easily toss you out into space like so much garbage. But I hoped you would find cooperation more interesting. Hey, hey, okay. We'll do it. We'll go wherever you want to go. 
Don't be so rash, huh? Had you accommodated me from the outset, we would have saved one minute, 45 seconds. Regardless, I am now coming aboard. Please open the cargo bay for me now. All right, whatever you say. It's right underneath the bow of the ship. Make it quick, huh? Understood. One more thing. What, what is it? Do not accelerate in an attempt to knock me off. If you do so, I will destroy the engine and the entire ship with it. <sighs> She's got us, Red. Oh, hey, Captain. I've got someone on the open channel. Oh, yeah? Then put them up on the speakers. Hello? Is anyone out there? If you're scanning this channel, please respond. Hello? Is anyone out there? What? Come on, shooter. You have to try. Oh, we only have 40 hours of oxygen left. Someone, please, hurry up and help us. Please. What the hell is this? The killing is using up our oxygen. Somebody, please hear this and come help us. It is Xion. Master Wilhelm, I have a report from Cosmos. It appears that Cosmos will now be working directly with Xion Uzuki and Alan Ridgely. I see. This must be rather confusing for them. You are Vector CEO, sir. Cosmos is programmed to give any order you send out her highest priority. Even her chief developer is unaware of this fact, nor would she know how to override it. Perhaps. But if something were to threaten the Chief, Cosmos would protect her, wouldn't she? Tell me, is that not right? Yes. That would be the Prime Directive. Either way, in the end, it was a wise decision to pull back Cosmos. It is well, Red Testament. All phenomena are moving forward as specified by this compass of order. As for the rest, gather the necessary factors, and wait for the other one to awaken. speed is 500 per second. Kick in the low resonance repulsors. Slow us up 5%. Aye, aye. I will control deceleration timing. Three, two, one. Cargo bay is depressurized. I'm going to open the cargo bay door if that's all right. Yeah, sure, whatever. Here we go. My apologies, Captain, but I overheard the previous transmission. Well, that makes things faster. Yeah, I hate to break it to you, but it looks like me and the boys are taking ourselves a little detour. Can't tell how many light years out of the way we're going. Quite frankly, this disturbs me. Hey, I'm sure it does. But we ain't exactly doing this because we feel like it, you know. I know. Let me go ahead and remove the cause of this burden from your lives. Any objections? Hey, wait! What the hell are you talking about? Don't go doing something that can screw up my shit! I'll try, but I can make no guarantee. Petition the Galaxy Federation Contact Subcommittee about any damages. Hold it right there, pal! The hatch is fully open, Captain. Ziggy, where are you holding up? Maintenance corridor leading to the cargo bay. Preparing to engage target. Ending transmission. Oh. Hey, if somebody has the time, could you bring peace and quiet back to my ship?! The pod has landed safely in the cargo bay. Closing external hatch now. <sighs> I can finally relax a little, hmm? Chief? The hatch is closed. When pressurization is complete, please report directly to the bridge. Well, a not unworthy opponent. Target locked on. Identified as Cyborg. Commencing combat mode now. Who the hell 
is this guy? Does he really think he can take on an android? Cosmos! Well, what are you doing? Chief, it's still depressurized out there. It'll be ready soon. Fine, then wait till it's completely ready. Watch out! It's too early! Ah! <gasps> Momo! Ziggy! Get out of the way! Don't do it! Please stand aside, Xion. I will not allow you to engage in any more unauthorized combat, Cosmos! At the present moment, our safe arrival at Second Milsha is of the utmost importance. You acted recklessly. I'm very sorry. My prime directive is to make sure you make it safely to Second Milsha. You mean you're going there too? Huh? Could you be... Hard to believe that even with the ES Simeon, you failed to secure the Zohar emulator. What? You bastards didn't actually think I was going to finish your silly little errand, did you? <laughs> oh, well, sorry to disappoint you. How can you bring that into a place like this? I have agents placed very deeply into the fleet who inform me, and they tell me that the Zohar has fallen into the hands of the Gnosis. Zohar? You mean the fake created by Joachim Rahi, right? Everybody knows the real Zohar lies at the bottom of the abyss. I believe it's in the vicinity of your last glimmer of hope. It may have only been an emulator, but it was the only thing of its kind not in the possession of the Second Milsha government. Your carelessness cost us even that. Ha! If you're so certain you're going to get your hands on the original, then why should you care? Oh, right! You and your agents have gone and lost the key that would lead you to the original Zohar, haven't you? Bastard, you knew about that? And the 100 Series Realian prototype. I heard that was recovered by one of the Fed's cyborgs. The prototype? Momo. I'll give it a shot. I wouldn't mind at all going after that and getting it back. I mean, if you really think about it, it's important to me as well. Why you? On a mission like this, I think I'm more likely to succeed than your dogs. <laughs> ah, yes, feed me your hostility. Come on, boys, pierce me with your hatred while you have the chance. I will shoot. <laughs> no. Don't worry, because I won't get in your way. We're working toward the same goal, right? I warn you, you Tick will have no patience with anybody interfering with our plans. We are already preparing for recovery. Oh, good. I'll finally get to see you guys in action. I hope you'll have fun playing with your doll, Albedo. <laughs> So, are you relieved that the prototype, I mean, Mapesh, isn't here? It must be quite a challenge pretending to be a 100 series Realian unit just in order to survive out there. No matter where you go in this universe, you'll never be able to live as yourself. Don't ever forget that, you hear me? Do you, my little fake Kirschwasser? To gate in! UMM nice. pulse reception is good. Commencing long range jump. Destination Milsha system. Three, two, one! Here we go! Logic drive output stable. You're an old girl, but you're running as tight as ever, Elsa. We got time before we get to second Milsha. What do you say our new guests use some of it to tell us who the hell they are? Hello, I'm Alan Ridgely from Vector Industries main branch R&D division. I really must beg for your forgiveness. 
I apologize for all the trouble our errant Cosmos may have caused you back there. Uh. Oh, and this is my superior, Shion Uzuki. U Uzuki? And this gentleman is... Uh, who are you? Lieutenant Lewis Virgil, Galaxy Federation. Commander of the Eggs Unit, 117th Marine Division. That's who I am, kid. And I'm Captain Matthews. I was a Marine once, too. I hope it don't bug you, but my days of respecting your rank are over, Lieutenant. Sure thing. That's all right. So, our captain was a soldier, too. Isn't that great? It'll make all of this go a lot smoother, don't you think, fellas? I know how much it hurts to lose your ship. So if you need anything from me, let me know. I need to report into Division HQ, but I can't charter a ship. Just drop me off at the closest point, okay? Hey, that would be Second Melsha, wouldn't it? Oh, and that's where our second division is as well. Chief, we should... Huh? Looks like you've had a pretty rough ride, little lady. Once we arrive at our destination, how about you and I get a suite and settle in with a nice bottle of wine? Well, um... A little wine will wash away those painful memories. Do you talk to everybody like that? Hey, you guys better be careful over there. Sometimes women and ships get all mixed up in Tony's little head. He says taking them for a ride is a job and a hobby. Shut your big mouth, Hammer! <laughs> hey, so you finally showed me a smile. Uh, well, how about that wine in my suite? <laughs> you see, my hometown is in Second Milsha, so there's no need for me to stay in a... in a suite. <laughs> Watch it! Now then. Maybe you can take me to your hometown and introduce me to your family. Sure, why not? That is, if you're not afraid of my dangerous idiot of an older brother pulling a sword on you. His, uh, sword? That sounds kind of, uh... Pardon me for interrupting, gentlemen. May I use the maintenance lab on your ship, Captain? Just a second, Cosmos. Due to the limitations of the test-use condenser, my energy reserves are almost depleted. I wish to receive a co-generator bypass in order to replenish them. Uh, no problem, but you'll cover the bill, right? Yes. I'd be glad to show you the way. Cosmos, wait! You still haven't explained to me what these duties of yours are. Uh, how weird. I never taught her that kind of behavior. All right, now everybody's happy. Hey, you! Ms. Vector! I'll give you a break on the cost of this trip if you do me a favor. Uh, a favor? Shion Uzuki. Well then, your chief developer just happens to be the younger sister of Captain Jin Uzuki, huh? I almost forgot. So, we finally meet. Now, where is the real you sleeping at this moment? <laughs> what a surprise! If I thought the favor was just to make us some food, I wouldn't have been nervous. He had me do the same thing. As soon as I came on board. Is that so? Yes. The crew used to take turns cooking, but no matter who did it, they ended up fighting about it. Uh, can you grab the onions? Okay. They'd fight to see who cook? That's probably not it. It's not. I wonder what they're used to eating. Kind of scary. Hey, Momo? Yes? You're a... 100 Series Realian, aren't you? I'm the prototype, to be more specific. The prototype? That insignia. I guess that means you must be from the Mizrahi lab. Which means you're the first 100 Series Observational Realian Mizrahi ever made, right? Yes! Which makes all of the mass-produced 100 series observational units my sisters, you know? I see. So that's why... <sighs> ah, I'm sure looking forward to tasting Xi'an's homemade cooking. I wouldn't get too excited. She's an engineer, not a chef. <laughs> oh, Captain. You try to sound cynical, but the look on your face says you can't wait to taste it either. Hmm? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> this is a pretty nice ship you guys have here. Well, it is a Lohengrin-class high-speed cruiser. Yeah, she's a good little ship, all right. 
Almost good enough to make up for the debt we're in because of her. Yeah, if we'd known then what we know now, we'd have just gone ahead and bought her legally, am I right? Whoa, what's that mean? How did you get your hands on this thing? File that under better off not knowing. Sometimes things are beyond your control. Hey, Captain. Yeah, what? There's a ship that's been following us for quite a while. We're going to a popular spot. Maybe they're just heading in the same direction. Maybe. But they're blocking recognition codes, general comm systems, pretty much everything. You know? Basically like they're up to something. I see what you're saying. Huh? Make sure there's a plate for everyone. Okay. Here it is. Thanks, Ziggy. Your curry smells really delicious, Xi'an. <laughs> I got the recipe from one of the best restaurants in Second Milsha. I'll take you there so you can taste the original dish. That would be wonderful! Uh... I'm sorry. We probably won't have the freedom to travel about once we arrive in Second Milsha. Uh... Here's the water. Ziggy, I was just wondering how you and Momo ended up together. I was a prisoner of Utik, and I met Ziggy when he came and rescued me from them. What? Whoa! Wait, but how could you go up against Utik? I heard that they were destroyed ages ago. Yes, well, news of their demise seems to have been premature. I'm sorry, but saying more would compromise Galaxy Federation security. You should remember that, Momo. Okay, I will. All right. So, Ziggy is the knight in shining armor who rescued you in service to the Federation, is that it? That's right. But there's more to the story than just that. He rescued me because my mother asked him to. Really? Mm-hmm. What Momo means to say is that her legal guardian is a certain high-ranking official. I simply acted at the request of that individual. I'm sorry... But the rest is classified, isn't it? That's right! It's classified! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! We're under attack. I was expecting this to happen. Tony! Aye aye! Just leave it to me! <laughs> Any idea who these idiots that are trying to kill us are? No clue. Still no recognition codes. No reading on the UMN. No response to the general comm frequency. There's nothing. Nothing! Matthews, you happen to have an old Ames aboard this thing? You gotta be kidding me, pal. It was built for cargo. Light armaments are all it's got. All right, fine. Let me have them. Quick! Go get them! They're on the second half deck! And hey, thanks a lot! What's happening out there? Move it! Ugh. Captain, what's going on? We're under attack by an unknown ship! Wait, but we're in hyperspace! They can't do that! Yeah, is that so? Then why don't you step out there and give them a stern talking to? Oh, please! If I go out into hyperspace without protection, then I'd be... It's a huh? joke! What are you, dead? That design... It's definitely not one of ours. I wonder who built that thing. Hyam's Heavy Industries. I know it. I fought that kind of ship before. They have ties to a certain organization, one that most people think is dead. What organization? You don't know? It's the ghost of Joachim Mizrahi, the supposedly extinct Utik organization. Cyborg for Ziggurat Industries, correct? Yes, that is correct, Councilman. This is your current objective. You will infiltrate a Utic stronghold. There you will rescue. No, recover this target. I understand. 
She's coated with extensive amounts of research data. A database left behind by the founder of UTIC, yes? That's true. It's data that could affect the fate of mankind. What is the founder's involvement? He's Joachim Mizrahi. He's the man who advocated the creation of that child, the 100 series. An observational unit. His immersion into science created many victims during the conflict. Also, he happens to be my ex-husband. Do you want to know what it was like being married to a murderer? No, I don't. Huh? Let me confirm. You're the 100 series prototype, correct? I don't like that name. Then do you have another one? Momo. My daddy calls me Momo. I mean, he called me that. All right. I'm getting you out of here, Momo. Okay. Get back from the door. Military Realian? No, a cyborg. I'm an ancient relic. I registered as an organ donor without much thought, and they resurrected me from death. You were subject to that infamous life recycling act, right? I was. Okay, but, um, you haven't told me your name. They call me Ziggurat 8. You used to be a human being, but your name sounds more like a model number. I know! How about I call you Ziggy instead? It's short for Ziggurat. C Z I G G Y. What's wrong? That's all you got, cyborg. Ziggy! External hatches on hangars one through three are damaged. Required repair time is 17 hours. Don't even dream that you'll get away. 100 series prototype. Avoid destroying it in hyperspace. I want no direct hits to their engines. I am. Are you 100% sure that ship belongs to Utic? You're not mistaken. I am. Then it looks like they're not giving up Momo so easily after all. Don't get yourself all worked up, Ziggy. I'm gonna show you why the Elsa was chosen for this job. Just watch her do her stuff. Hey, Tony! I'm on it. Just waiting for the logic drive to warm up. Then they'll eat stardust. Hang on. You think you're going to run combat maneuvers in hyperspace? You've got to be kidding. I'm not kidding. But you don't worry about it, all right? With Elsa's logic drive and my piloting skills, we've got this in the bag already. There's nothing we can't handle! Damn. What kind of depraved animal sends a battleship out against a cruiser like this? Receive word that the 100 series is aboard a ship headed for home. Barring any delays, they should arrive shortly. Oh well, that was fast. Now then, once she's safely transferred to the UMN control center on 2nd Milsha, we'll finally have a little peace of mind. It's all such a bother, though. It would have been much easier to perform the analysis here. Yes, but we can't decode the protection in that realium here. So we have to send her to the UMN control center. It's the former Vector gate control facility. By the way, pardon me, the Y data we seek, is it really hidden in that prototype? I'm absolutely certain of it. She holds the code we're looking for, which will unlock the UMN transfer gate, leading to the sector that was sealed off 14 years ago. That will give us access to the old Milsha sector, but... Our hands are tied until we locate the original Zohar located there. That's what we were all thinking, wasn't it? But what of this UTIC battleship pursuing them? 
I hope that our team is safe. There's no need to worry. They'll come out of this just fine. I have very dependable allies. All right now! Logic drive full thrust! Here we go! Target is accelerating. Push them right up against the wall. Then it will have to gate out before it destroys itself. Watch out, Tony! If we hit the wall like this, it's all over. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't care! Oh god! We're doomed! <laughs> They're insane. That's suicide. I feel the burn. I'm on fire! And no! Are they wave riding in a hundred meter class ship? Captain, target is moving out of firing range. <laughs> That's it. It's not good. Target is out of optimal range. We lost it. I guess that will teach me to underestimate the talents of a civilian crew. Those maneuvers must have caused major damage to their hull. Watch every nearby dock colony. Keep an eye on any place they can stop for repairs. Aye, aye. <sighs> uh, we're being attacked from the stern. An unknown vessel has locked onto us. The ship is... Uh, is what? 4,000 meters long. It's... it's a dreadnought. What's it doing here? Lousy you take creeps. Pounding away at the Elsa like that? Laser volley that ship's energy shield is much stronger than I expected. We need to get a lot closer if we want to take that thing down. 14 years of hiding their faces from the galaxy? Now they come out, but they cover themselves like turtles. Well, little master, what now? I want to show them the full extent of the Durandal's power, but we don't have time. But we'll get another chance. They gave up chasing the Elsa, and that's good enough for me right now. We can let him go. That's much too rational a decision for our little master to make. Oh well, we'll do it anyway! Seriously, Mary, enough with the constant commentary, huh? Little master, what do you think we should do with the Elsa now? As long as that other ship's out there, we keep it nice and quiet. But once we lose him, bring the Elsa on board. Understood, sir. You'll finally meet Lady Momo. How nice. Just mind your own business, okay? <laughs> Momo. Marker detected. Specifying current location. Maybe we only think we survived. Well, I'll be damned. I've never seen anyone avoid enemy fire with fancy flying like that. Yeah, we do tend to play things on the dangerous side. Just because I left the military doesn't mean I've been taking it easy. You got that right. Combat would be a breeze compared to that crap. Captain. Do you really believe all of that was enough to elude our attackers? I guess they could circle around us, try and pull an ambush on us or something. Who can say? I could say this. They can try all the dirty tricks that they want to, but no one can catch up to us from behind. Sir, thank you for all you've done. Hmm? It was nothing. Just doing our jobs, little lady. Confirming supply cable from the generator. Output. Steady at 11.6%. What the hell? All of a sudden the logic drive power is falling! What? What's going on there? We're having trouble getting power from the generator, sir! It's not just that. We've got problems all over. The entire radar system is down. I think the emitter is completely fried. Thanks to a certain idiot who flies like a maniac. 
What's that mean? Who do you think it was that saved us from being blown to bits? Yeah, we'll consider what the Navigator has to go through. I'm getting carpal tunnel thanks to you, dork. Why don't you just direct Link it and take a rest? Isn't it obvious that it's much cooler to navigate by hand, moron? This is stupid or so not your own business! At least I'm more useful than a lunatic! Okay, now. So you think you're the man? You wanna go? What you got? That's Ooh. enough! Both you morons, shut up! I'm sick of listening to your whining! Captain, at current output, the ship will be destroyed in 7 minutes, 35 seconds. I suggest you gate out immediately. Yeah, I know, Robo Girly. Hey, Hammer! Hurry up and calculate those jump settings. I have already calculated those settings. Presently transmitting. Yep, they're here. Not bad for a robo skirt. Emergency gate out. Do it! <laughs> job just kicks your butt hard. What? No! What are those things? Huh? What's the problem? No! It can't be! What? Spit it out, damn it! Look right behind us. A legion of Gnosis! Like, 30,000 of them! Okay, are you paying attention? You know we get it out for a reason, right? Then use normal propulsion to get us out of here! Uh, aye aye! Cosmos, don't tell me you did this! I must apologize, but I discovered that the Gnosis behind us have something with them that must be protected, so I contacted them and brought them here. You mean you did this on purpose? What?! Just what the hell have you gotten us into, freak? I see. Those are the Gnosis, then. The ones that killed all of our friends. Hey, can you shake them? Well, the smart money's on no way. Good bet. I saw them annihilate an entire fleet of ships bigger than this one. So what do you want me to do about it? Uh, I'm so sorry. This is all because of Cosmos. It's all right. We dragged you into our battle, so I guess we're even now. I guess we are. But still, that doesn't make our situation any less desperate. Look! They're following us! Thanks for the news, Flash! Damn. If I only had an X right now. What possible difference would that make? We'd still be dead for sure! Can it! You're the ones to blame for this anyway! It might be a bit early to say we've lost. You don't need to see your coffin to know you're dead. Huh? Hey, a large object is gating out. It's right behind us, and man, it's a big ship. Getting an ID. It's the Durandal! <laughs> We're saved! The Durandal? That's right. It's a battleship from the Kukai Foundation. Amplifier output set to maximum. 100 series units. Commence Hilbert effect now. Incredible! I can't believe they can send the Hilbert effect over such a wide area. They must have more than a hundred series unit. And I'm almost scared to imagine how powerful their amplifier is. Oh, please. 
The Gnosis wiped out an entire fleet. How can one ship take them all on? If anything can do it, the Durando can. It's not one of the top five battleships in the galaxy for nothing, you know. Open photon torpedo tubes! All guns, target the Gnosis fleet! Cut open an escape path for the Elsa and kill the rest! Approximately 300 Gnosis ships were destroyed in our first wave. The surviving ships are now trying to escape. Predict their escape routes and fire photon torpedoes to stop them. They're not going anywhere. Aye, aye. Now ready on tubes one through 700. And fire! Now, it's just a matter of having enough ammo. This is what I get for taking on the UTIC without restocking first. It's truly incredible. One ship really is standing up to 30,000 Gnosis and making them feel it. Hey, Chief. I heard about the Kukai Foundation. I seem to remember they're a special group headquartered on a mobile colony, right? But if that's true, then why do they need a battleship like that? I don't know, but I think our company is funding them. See that powerful laser cannon? Our second division developed that. What? I didn't know that. Wow. About 8,000, give or take a hundred. Aw, oh, man. That's only a quarter of them. And our ammo supply is now down to 20%. If we keep this up, we're out of luck. Little Master, enemy formation approaching at 5 o'clock. We're being surrounded on all sides. So they won't let us go. They've coordinated their attack patterns. I've never seen them fight like this before. Even if we gate out of here, we might not shake them. Little Master! Another group is chasing after the Elsa! At this rate! Shelly! Mary! I need you to take over the bridge! Little Master! Where are you going? I'm getting my eggs! I won't let them get the Elsa! Oh, they're coming our way! Tony! Can we shake them? I don't think so. No matter what we do, they're faster. Damn it. Randall's doing the very best he can do. Doesn't matter. We're outnumbered. Hey! Looks like hatch number 17 is open. There was somebody down there? It's Cosmos! What is she? I'll put it on the monitor. Cosmos! What are you doing? You need to get back here! There's too many of them for you to destroy by yourself! You're not equipped to handle that many targets! Xion. Will feeling pain make me complete? What? I can't hear you! That air is too thin for her voice to carry well. This is total congestion in the communication lines. Full boost! Somebody out 
Commissioner is exchanging a buttload of data with the Durandal. Are you the one? Will feeling pain make me complete? intruder alert in the Pieta mother frame. Permutational phenomenon appearing in the variant. You mean someone's hacking into Mama now? Scan transfection course. Course has been tracked. It's definitely coming from the quarantine hangar. Then it's because of the emulators, right? Yes. External sources are sending them. The signals are going to the Zohar emulators. Paradigm contamination is spreading. If this keeps up, the mother frame will be taken over. <sighs> That does it. Cut off the main line to the quarantine hangar immediately. Listen up. Stabilize the attract inhibitor through a secondary line. Purge the main line and block all signals. Understood. Switching attract inhibitor to secondary line. Commencing emergency block of lines What's happening? one through six. Just what the hell is going on here? It's no good. The Gnosis have caught up with us. She absorbed the Gnosis instead of attacking them like expected. How could she have weaponry that I don't know about? But no, that wasn't a weapon now, was it? That was a... That thing was something impossible. Who cares if it's possible or not? She got rid of the Gnosis. That's good enough for me in my book. Hey, uh, Captain, Little Master's been buzzing us like crazy for quite a while now. Oh, patch him in. Hey there, little master. Long time no see. Momo. What? I didn't catch that. It's nothing. Let's get right to it. Between the Gnosis and the Utic Coons, you guys sure get into your fair share of trouble. You got it all wrong there. We're victims of circumstance, you see. All this trouble was brought to us by our passengers. This isn't the Cosmos I know. Kevin, is this your hand at work? Is this the real Cosmos? I didn't realize there was so much I didn't know. Fill me in on the situation later. The important thing right now is all the damage you've taken. We can bring her aboard the Durandal if you feel like doing some repairs. That sounds great. Thanks for the offer.
Hey, what is that? Does it seem strange to you? It looks like a colony. This is unlike any battleship I have ever seen before. Wow. Let's head for the bridge. Little Master's waiting for us. Bring that one with us, too. They've all really been looking forward to meeting you, so I hope you'll be friends with them. I will. I'm Junior, Guinan Junior. I got a real name, but let's leave it at that. Sorry it took so much hassle to bring you here, but really good to meet you, okay? It's nice to meet you, too. I'm Momo. I know. I've never met you, but I know all about you. Huh? You see, I'm a very old acquaintance of Dr. Yuli Mizrahi. Is that so? You were friends with my mommy? It was Junior who made the arrangements for your trip. He's the one who got you aboard the Elsa in the first place, see? I didn't realize that. Thank you so much, Junior. Hey, I'm just glad I could help out. You're welcome. If he's going in Junior, then that means that he's... Yeah. See, he's the adopted son of Gainan Kukai. He may not look like it but Little Master's on the board of directors of the Kukai Foundation. You know some amazing people, you know that? He's our boss, the head honcho, the guy who runs the show. Or another way to say it, he's the one we work for because we owe him so much money, right? Well, yeah, but we wouldn't have it any other way even if we weren't broke. How about you quit ah! fighting those guns? <laughs> Sir, the Elsa looks pretty beat up after your last tussle. If I were you, I'd get her a complete top-to-bottom overhaul at the Foundation. What? You mean at the... Huh? This is bad, Chief. According to the rumors, that place is just a den of mutants and psychics. Oh, Alan, that's nothing but prejudice. You don't have to hmm? go. Would you rather we left you here in space? Because that can easily be arranged. Uh, no! No, sorry, sir. Look, little master, what do you say we just leave this wuss behind, okay? He spends all of his time moaning and groaning all day. Well, hey, come on, Captain! Chaos, help me out here! It's not really up to me, you know. I'd better leave this one up to you two. Then I'm definitely giving him the boot. Oh, c come on! <laughs> hey, man, don't freak out on us. We're just playing around. Shelly, we've got a change of plans. We're returning to the Foundation. And make sure to tell Guinan that we've secured the last of the fakes. Am I clear? Roger that. Preparing to return to the Foundation. How'd I end up in this situation? At this moment, I was supposed to be enjoying my vacation. Listen to me, Director. Cosmos is moving around of her own accord for some reason. She's used a function we didn't know about. There's no way I can turn her over to the second division on second Melsha. I can't let her out of my sight before determining the cause of this behavior. There's nothing we can do about it, so please stop whining. I can easily handle what needs to be done with Cosmos by myself, so why don't you just go ahead and take your leave, Alan? What are you talking about? The job of the assistant chief is to support the chief. I can't just go off by myself and lounge around. Well, that's what I thought you'd say. 
Looks like you're gonna be stuck right by my side. How about that? <sighs> That's just great! Wait up! First things first. I should see Junior. He has something to show me. Want to come with? I'm with you, Chief. I'm sorry. I wanted you guys to get some rest before we arrived at the Foundation, but... No, it's okay. But, um, Junior? What is this place? I've just noticed that the environmental controls here seem extremely strict. Large blocks. Six to one side, with one directly across. Thirteen in all. Looks like each block has a name inscribed. <laughs> You've got great eyesight. Let's see. Peter, Andrew, Bonergus, Thomas, John, and Philip, and Matthew, Bartholomew, and James, Thaddeus, Simon, Judas. And the last one. It appears to say Marion Keat. I think I've heard that somewhere. It means the child of Mary. <sighs> you see? This is where we store all the really dangerous items. They're all emulators. Emulators, huh? Is that what you meant by fakes earlier? Yeah. The original is supposedly hidden at Old Milsha. Really? Old Milsha? These may not be real, but they're still dangerous. It's not for nothing the Federation fleet that recovered the final one was destroyed by the Gnosis. The final one? Mm-hmm. All of the Zohar emulators that Joachim Mizrahi left behind are sealed away in here. But why? Well, our corporation does dabble a little in everything. Besides, these days you can't get by without having something to deal with the Gnosis. And we definitely can't wait around for the Federation to get off its lazy butt. Uh... Junior? What's in the room across from here? Nothing pleasant, I'll tell you that much. You're not going to show us? Just trust me, you don't want to see it. Even if your business is diverse, you're still a Foundation, right? It's not hard to see. The weaponry on this ship far outclasses that of any conventional warship. Tell me, Junior, what is the Kukai Foundation? We were more or less a government organization previously. Well, why not? You've already been involved with the Zohar and the Gnosis, so I guess you can handle it. <sighs> if you want to see it that badly, go ahead. Um, what is this? I warned you you weren't gonna like it, right? All of these specimens appear to be humans whose bodies have turned into gnosis. I can't believe it. Humans transformed in gnosis. I've only heard of them before. Most people just turn white and shatter to pieces. But the exceptions, they usually just end up like this. We've named this one Betty for now. <laughs> it's hard to look straight at them. But I don't want to refer to them by some code name or number. It's just not right to treat the dead like mere objects. You know? Junior? Is that a lady? She was a little girl the last time we saw her. To be honest, I can't believe people are turning into Gnosis. Have you learned anything about them to understand this? Not much. Plenty of Gnosis remains have been recovered to date. But nobody's learned a thing from them. You know what they're composed of? No, I... I don't. NACL. Plain old salt. Even their translucent bodies. They're mostly made up of sodium hydroxide. How can ordinary compounds like that form creatures like them? No one really knows why those who survive Gnosis encounters always turn into one of them. Some people think they're a new type of virus. Others say they're beings from another dimension who take on temporary forms in this one. Those who survive Gnosis encounters always turn into one of them? 
Always? No exceptions? Nope. Not as far as I know. So theoretically, they could be from another dimension. Wouldn't that mean that their true form exists somewhere else? Who knows? All that's certain is that they're hostile to humans. Not that such a sentiment is unique to them. Not at all. So, so when exactly did all this begin, Junior? Unofficially, phenomena like this have been occurring periodically for the past few centuries. But after a certain incident, the Gnosis leapt into the forefront of history. An incident? The Milshan Conflict. The ambition of a single man created a system called the Song of Nephilim. And a lot of people paid the price. It was a terrible thing. Joachim Mizrahi. The brilliant scientist who founded the UTIC organization. He was a murderer. Just because he was unable to contain his curiosity, he invited the Gnosis into our world. He was a murderer? The Kukai Foundation was established after the war by the newly formed Second Milshan government to clean up and investigate the facts behind the incident. It was an enormous task to take on. Technically, that's our real job. Problem is, the funding is tight in peacetime. Also, running the Foundation and managing these Zohars takes a staggering amount of money. So we privatize part of our operations. We never imagined that some of our side businesses would hit it so big, though. Little Master. Huh? Hey, where did our guests go? Ugh, oh, damn it. What do you all think? Joachim Mizrahi, the murderer? Can someone tell me that Daddy was really like that? And since Daddy built me and the others, does that mean we're bad people? Ugh, Momo, we were looking all over for you. <sighs> Xion. Hey, what's wrong? You look kind of down. You see, Xion? I was created by Joachim Mizrahi, you know? He designed the 100 series Realians back then, with Federation funds. I know that. Xi'an, I... People don't know that Daddy wasn't a bad man, see? Hmm. <laughs> These lights? Do you know about the environmental bugs? They're nanomachines used to keep enclosed spaces like this clean. I'd say that of all the things created by Professor Mizrahi or anyone else, they rank up there pretty high. These books may be man-made, but they function as if they've existed all along, almost as if they were meant to be. If you ask me, I think Realians are the same as that. Uh, really, Xion? I really doubt Dr. Mizrahi was a dangerous person like everyone makes him out to be. And it's not just because of the environmental bugs. The work he did on Realians was incredibly insightful. Someone that smart couldn't be completely bad. In addition to that, the fundamental Gnosis research Professor Mizrahi left behind played a critical role in the development of modern anti-Gnosis technology. <sighs> Thanks for the backup, Cosmos. I'm really glad to see you reacting like that. Empathizing with the feelings of others is a major factor in human relationships. Although I do not believe that the current situation called for me to act in an empathetic manner, I am pleased to be of service to you and the 100 series unit. <laughs> I think Cosmos is really funny, don't you? Regardless, it's too bad she doesn't take instructions very well. I never got to meet Daddy, but he used to talk to me all the time before I was born. It's all a little hazy, but I remember him telling me that I could become a real person if I did good deeds. I never forgot that. I try so hard. Really? That's a wonderful memory to have. Uh-huh. Look! Momo! Cosmos! Wow! So pretty! What you see is the mobile colony. That is the Kukai Foundation. That's really it. That's the Foundation! spend their money, that's for sure. What? You mean we're going to talk just like this?
Gainan Kukai, the managing director of the Kukai Foundation. Junior? Grown? What was that? Uh, nothing. It's nice to meet you. Welcome to the Kukai Foundation. <sighs> it's good to meet you. I heard about your situation from Matthews and Chaos. You all right? Yes. Thank you for your help. Enjoy your stay. Acting so rudely towards someone I just met. And you're Momo. Just now I received word from Yuli Mizrahi of the Contact Subcommittee. We'll make sure you make it to Second Milsha safely. You received word from Mommy? Right. And she told me to take good care of you. Then can I talk to her too? Well now, she did seem pretty busy. Oh, I see. Why doesn't Mommy ever want to see me? I promise I'll let you know as soon as I hear from her again. Yes, thank you very much, sir. Can't be. I saw that android Cosmos in action. She has incredible potential. No matter what they say, there's no way she's a prototype. I'm also concerned about the way she resonated with the emulators. I heard from my sources that they lost the archetype two years ago, but it looks like there's more to it than that. Oh, and don't forget what's her name, Xion. I think she may be on to us and our powers. No way, she's just an ordinary human. Even so, she may not be as ordinary as you think. Doubt it. She seems normal enough to me, you know? Still, though, she's involved in the Cosmos Project, which is the most classified part of all that they're working on. I guess it's possible after all. So, the Zohar Project... Hey, tell you what. Let's lay off the Mizrahi talk for now. Ah, concerned about that Momo girl? Don't look at me like that. You know as well as anyone, Sakura entrusted me with Momo. Momo's been called the child of a madman. Nobody wants that, right? Listen, we were both there when Mizrahi met his inn 14 years ago. We saw what happened, yes? She thinks she remembers her father, but there's no denying the image that she holds of Mizrahi might be imprinted. I don't know, but that's pretty much why I want you to lay off. At least for now, okay? Well, if you're that concerned about her, why don't you invite her down to the beach? I'm sure it will take her mind off things. I told you it's not like that, honestly. Hey. Huh? So what's this? It's a genuine stainless steel finished PM with the original box and everything. I saw it at an auction last week. So I bid on it. This isn't like you at all. You're up to something. Not at all. I just thought I'd give you a reward for all your hard work. You've had a lot. Have I gone too far? Don't shoot that thing recklessly. Remember, you're older than I am. How about you try to act like it once in a while, okay? Sweet! Oh well. I guess it doesn't hurt to follow his annoying advice every now and again. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, Representative Helmer. Oh, no. It goes without saying that even a representative of the Milsha government doesn't have as busy a schedule as you, Negrito. I'm sorry, but I don't really care for that name. Of course. My apologies. I'm still not accustomed to calling you Guinan. So, have you managed to secure the 100 series prototype? Yes, and without incident as well. Also, she came with something of interest. Oh? 
cargo we secured from an unexpected source. It's fresh off the Federation cruiser Voglinda. It's an emulator. You mean the 12th one? Yes, that matches the UTIC records exactly. That's right. Assuming they haven't constructed any more in secret, then that's all of them. And that's impossible. Joachim Mizrahi is the only man who can create them as we know. He is also no longer alive. True enough. Anyway, I'm concerned with what the UTIC organization is up to. You may want to set up your precautions to be sure. I'll see what I can sniff out from the UMN Administration Bureau. We can locate any large-scale gate jumps from there, of course. Excellent. Assuming they have no undocumented emulators in their possession right now, they'll be out of our way. The odds are that they'll go after the original sealed on Old Milsha, and that is that. Understood. We'll prepare for your arrival immediately. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Heads up! <laughs> Back at ya! Would you laugh at me if I told you I think Cosmos has a heart? A heart? Emotional behavior, you mean? I've run across some interesting phenomena. It's weak, but if I didn't know any better, I'd say it's almost like a tiny little pulse. Is it really? We should definitely keep an eye on that in case we're onto something mm. new. Cosmos' elemental data structure duplicates that of the human brain, so something like that's certainly not out of the question. She was empathizing with Momo the whole time. I wonder what her subconscious waves were like back then. Flatline. Oh well. Nothing here at all. Oh, Kevin. You were probably the only one who could understand Cosmos in the end. And I'm just sorry I didn't understand that earlier. What's the matter, Chief? We came to the beach to have fun. Come on out. You've been gloomy lately. No. It's really nothing. Oh, say, Alan, do you think Guinan and Junior could be father and son? I was thinking that they look a little too far apart in age to be brothers. I've heard rumors here and there that Guinan cloned himself for the inheritance. Some say Junior's his bastard son. I don't think they're clones of each other. Their genome arrays are a little too different for that. Wow, Momo, you can actually see those things? Well, I am an observational unit. Let's see. They're more than just siblings or father and son. But at the same time, they're not identical either. But is that sort of thing possible? Their DNA only has to differ by 0.1% for them to be different people. Hey, wait! <gasps> Who's a bastard son? Uh, man, this beach is really awesome. It doesn't feel artificial at all, you know? <laughs> it's our latest product. You can even change the weather. You can't have blue skies all the time, right? Pesh and now the emulator have fallen into the Kukai Foundation's hands. So, what do you want me to do? We'll proceed with Plan 401. Don't interfere with it for now. Though, of course, I can't imagine the Foundation will simply hand it over to us if we ask. If the situation warrants it, we may have to use the Song of Nephilim. Understand? Well, surprise! Ms. Rahi's legacy, eh? And I thought you hated it with a passion. I'm just saying, even your toys have their uses. So then why don't you join me? We could enjoy the show. No, thank you. I'll pass. I don't share your perverse taste in hobbies. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Gutless bastard. Albedo Piazzolla. So that's the infamous URTV himself. Do we need his help in particular? There are plenty of mentally unstable life recycling variants out there. I understand. We can't keep our commander waiting any longer. He's a useful pawn. We can't just leave him idle. But is that the only reason we're proceeding with Plan 401? I'll allow you to use an ES. 
prove your worthiness. But if Plan 401 ultimately fails, will you really use it? The Song of Nephilim? Pelagri, have you ever heard the Song of Nephilim? That song draws everything to madness. But today I wanted you to have a look around the Foundation City just once before you leave. <laughs> that smells great! Huh? Welcome, everyone! How about some freshly baked bread? It's really delicious! <sighs> this place is really nice and peaceful, you know? You mean quite different from all the bad rumors you've heard? Uh, well, I... you know... The Life Recycling Act is responsible for a lot of this. Under it, genetic and cybernetic alterations were encouraged. So people with all sorts of special abilities were born. <gasps> this continued even after the act was repealed. But by then, these specially enabled people couldn't find a place to call their own. We gave up being pure humans, which in a sense makes us no different than realians. We're no longer a part of society. We're simply its machinery. Foundation became a haven for all of you. Um, excuse me, Chaos. Please, don't worry about it. At least seeing the city for yourself was enough for you to understand, right, Alan? It is, Chaos. Wow, it's so bluffy! You can take it with you. Huh? I've already paid for it. Why don't you take it as a souvenir from the Foundation and a gift from me? Um, thank you so much. Mm. Don't mention it. Huh? <gasps> hey, Momo, do you like Bunny too? Yes, very much. Oh, take good care of it then, okay? Uh, Chief, is everything okay? Mm. Yes, everything's fine. Uh, bye, Chief. Oh, sure, nothing's ever wrong with her. If you're so super intelligent, what do you think I'm feeling every time I look at you? Hey, tough guy. That's enough for now. Tomorrow we'll be on second Milsha. Aw, uh, leave me alone. I'm feeling blue, and I can't take it, so I'm getting loaded. Man, if you cut it bad. Uh, just let him be. Seriously? The tears will make the drinks taste bad. Well, I can see you still don't want to be friends with the Vector guy, huh? Well, no, it's not just him. The android, the cyborg, the realian, the whole rotten lot of them turned my stomach. Okay, it makes sense that getting stuck in a place like this puts you in bad spirits. I see where you're coming from. Once I get back to HQ, I'll be drinking some good spirits. Now I'm just looking for my first chance to get out of here. Just keep in mind, you're not the only one who's got it rough, pal. Something weird's going on here. Like what? For the time being, civilian traffic on the UMN is severely restricted. Something smells rotten. <coughs> the professor just doesn't understand real people. He hates people worrying about him so much. I'll give him something to worry about. Oh, please, Chief. Ugh. Oh, hey, watch it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll clean it up right away. No, no, really, don't worry. Uh, well, that's nice of you. Thanks. That should take care of it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You're a nice person, right? Oh, yeah. Are you for real? After all this time and distance, I can't tell you how great it is to meet someone nice. Oddly enough, to be honest with you, I feel like I share some kind of connection with you, too. You don't seem like a stranger. Tell you what, why don't we have a drink together? All right, sure. I'd love to have a drink with you if you want. Look at those two. Unbelievable. Here we go. As a sign of friendship. Oh, well, thanks. Okay, now it's my turn to pour. Ah, thank you. Now, I propose a toast to our meeting. To our meeting. Down, Down the, hatch. the hatch. Wait, we haven't introduced ourselves to each other. Oh, that's right, we haven't yet. Okay, 
I'm Alan Ridgely from Vector Industries' first R&D division. And I'm Scott, an assistant researcher from Robot Academy. Good to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Did Alan go to bed? I want to apologize. I acted so badly before. I guess my timing was off. No! I mean, the professor's hey. a genius! I mean, his inventions are just amazing. Way ahead of the curve. I gotcha. I know what you're saying. Huh? She joined Vector when she was only 18, and now she's already chief of the division! You know what I'm talking about? I went to the professor and said, don't you even care about your health, sir? For the good of your research and the good of your health, you've got to stop drinking right now. I know. It's like I was there myself, Scott. She's only 22. She's so pretty young. Why can't you just let herself cry on my shoulder every once in a while? <laughs> You're exactly right. The chief is such a terrible person. And the professor's terrible, too. <laughs> <laughs> We will soon be entering second Milsha's satellite orbit. Orbital transition is scheduled to commence at 1400 hours local time. Second Milsha spaceport flight control. Our flight plan has been transmitted. Requesting permission to dock. Kukai Foundation, your flight plan has been accepted. Please hold your advance until Special A security review is complete. Special A security review? It's a Galaxy Federation fleet. What a strange welcome. Are they supposed to be escorting us in this time? Well, they never told me. Is your hangover really as bad as you're making it look? Yeah, ow, I'm really sorry. I swear. It's good to have fun, but still. They're blocking the way now. Sir, this is no welcome party. Incoming message from the Federation fleet, little master. In accordance with Federation law, we hereby place the Kukai Foundation under arrest on suspicion of aggression against Federation vessels. Shut down your engines and relinquish your weapons. What? Aggression against Federation vessels? What the heck? What? Furthermore, should the Milshin government allow the Kukai Foundation to dock, we will issue a state of emergency notice for conspiracy to aid insurrection. Consider this your proper warning. As you can see, the Kukai Foundation engaged in a direct act of aggression against the 117th Marine Division. We can only come to the conclusion that this was a clear act of rebellion. It was obviously orchestrated by the Foundation's creators, the autonomous Second Milshin Government. In light of this, we hereby enter a motion. Per Article 104, a motion for the emergency suspension of the vested rights of the Second Milshin's autonomous government. Said suspension to begin immediately. I'll add this to the record. The 422nd fleet from Gedalia has been dispatched to the scene in order to surround and contain these rebels. This action will apply to all of those associated with the Kukai Foundation and the Second Milshin government. Hold on there! Won't that constitute an unauthorized use of force? In these circumstances, the deployment is in accordance with the Federation Emergency Powers Act, so it's within our power. I'm disturbed that the Kukai Foundation possesses that level of weaponry in the first place. That's the larger issue at hand. But they have that weaponry because they're part of the anti-Gnosis measure, the Project Soha. Perhaps you can explain to me why weaponry designed to fight the Gnosis was instead used against the Federation. I don't understand what's going on. It's obvious. They think we conspired against them. They think we joined with the Milshin government and attacked their fleet. Ugh, this nonsense sure stinks to high heaven. Hey, look. Check out the network news on the sub-monitor, everyone. On the morning of the 21st, it appears that the 177th Marine Division flagship Buglinda of the Galaxy Federation's Tessadora Division came under attack by what? a heavily what are they talking ship about? They're the wrong! Foundation. How can they say that? No, our fleet was attacked by the Gnosis! Incoming firepower! Photon torpedoes have been fired! Impact in five seconds! Three, two, those idiots! Love! Courage! 
justice, victory, friendship, hard work, and uh, what else? Oh, 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 yes, yes, the embodiment of all that stuff. The invincible combination. Absolute justice. Erd Kaiser. I can hardly believe it now. It's been so long since I created the Robot Academy. And I still haven't created a huge, invincible, combinable robot. So sad. Uh, Professor, I beg you, please don't talk so loudly. Uh, you are beyond pathetic, boy. Aren't you supposed to be the super assistant to the hyper scientist? How could you give in to liquor and get a hangover? <laughs> oh, it's just pathetic. Please, just leave me alone. But you're not alone! You're with me! Helping me build a giant, mighty robot! The dream around which I've organized my whole life! Uh, of course. We'll go together on a manly quest to make that dream come true! I'm by your side! Right to the end! Incoming firepower! Photon torpedoes have been fired! Impact in five seconds! Three! Two! Confirmed photon torpedo detonation in immediate vicinity! So, they don't plan on getting rid of us that quickly. The Federation has launched a pack of shuttles. They're requesting permission to dock. Morons! Why do they think we're the ones who destroyed the Volklinda? How can it be? I thought the Gnosis attack had been reported to the Federation already. The company has been identified as operating in conjunction with the Second Milshan government. Considerations for the possibility of treason have forced the Federation Parliament to dispatch a fleet. More details as they arrive. They did a good job doctoring that video. Before we rendezvoused with the Elsa, we made a thorough investigation of the remains of the fleet. If we were up to something, why did we fight a UTIC organization warship while we were there? Oh! Those bastards were recording the whole thing! I see. So then, that would explain why the absolute coordinates match in their report. I guess that's their indisputable proof. Even I'm starting to believe that we actually did it. Considering the situation, you don't seem very worried. Well, in any event, this is our confirmation. The Utic remnants, they've clearly infiltrated the Federation and the military as well. What more proof do we need? Then that means their next target is definitely going to be... <laughs> Ludicrous! How can they sell this blatant lie? If we were to testify as survivors of the attack, then... They'll just claim you survived because you were in on it. That's how they'll spin it. Those bastards. How dare they use what happened to us for their own personal gain. Ah! Ah! Now then, if our sorry little mice stay in their traps, this will be all too easy. Much too easy. I'm from the Federation Special Ops Command Headquarters Intelligence Bureau. I'm Captain Lapis Roman. I hereby place this ship under the custody of the Galaxy Federation. I understand you're from the Voglenda. I'll take you in as witnesses to the incident. As of now, all Vector property will be temporarily confiscated as evidence. Cosmos! Captain, I'm Lieutenant Lewis Virgil of the Cruiser Voglenda. I request an immediate appeal. Don't I get an appeal? You'll get your chance to set the record straight, but now is not that time. Remain silent until the proper time. Captain! We found something. A hundred series realien under warrant. <gasps> hey! Don't you hurt her! <clears throat> Detain them all in a single room, and keep careful watch on them. All of them? Splitting them up will only underman our guard posts. Investigate as much of the ship as possible before we rendezvous with the others. Yes, ma'am. Gainan Kukai, you are hereby under arrest for suspicion of treason. Come along. 
As you wish, Captain. It's good to see you again, Representative Helmer. Likewise, Mr. Wilhelm. We haven't spoken since you resigned as Executive Committee Director. I'm well aware of the situation. Allow me to make a recommendation to the Parliament. You have my thanks. Actually, I'm currently underway to the Milshin system. You've dispatched the Dharmaron? I have. Merely as a result of my deep concerns. Your concerns? Namely this incident. Surely you've realized by now that there's some... There's no question of the UTIC organization's involvement. Then please pass a message on to Mr. Guinan. We'll lend him Cosmos. He can use her any way he sees fit. He has my explicit permission. Yes. In the worst case scenario, I imagine, she'll definitely be of use. I'll be glad to convey your message to him. Thank you. Good day. We don't have much time. Please hurry, Captain. It's all orchestrated too well. What do you mean? The fleet deployment came much too quickly. I'm sure that from the very beginning, recapturing Momo was part of their ongoing plan to ensnare Second Milsha. Everybody knows that Second Milsha was invested with a whole bunch of legal privileges. Even outside of the UTIC organization, there are a whole lot of folks who still have problems with that. Sorry for the wait. Gaiden! I thought you were arrested! I'm an agent working for Representative Helmer of the Second Milshin Parliament. I'm here to help you out. For real? Agents from the UTIC organization have infiltrated the military. So Helmer sent her to be his eyes and ears on the scene. Could have told me sooner. We'll go into detail later. For now, I'll just brief you on current events. You are presently under the custody of the government and the military. That much is the same as I told you before. The way things are now, within a few hours, she'll probably be turned over to anti-Milshin forces hiding inside the government. Specifically, the remnants of the UTIC organization. Representative Helmer is buying us some valuable time, but our opponents are skillful at manipulation. We are required to find concrete proof of your innocence. But how? I'm not sure. We need something that would give conclusive evidence of your innocence and get it out there. It's simple then. Get the Voglinda's black box. We've already recovered that. Unfortunately, it was modified to be the same as the video recording. And what about the Durandal's database? A record of the battle against the UTIC will be there. Can't we use that to prove our innocence? Is it a standard database? Yeah, it is. Then it's no good. It could be too easily altered. I'm not certain how reliable it would be as evidence. If we had something that even the owner couldn't change, say, a system with AAA class encryption, then maybe... maybe... What? Triple A? You don't find systems with that protection just lying around? If you want something like that, you need the Federation government's mother frame at least. The UMN operating system would also work, but even so... Cosmos! Cosmos's data encryption is Triple A! Why didn't I think of that? It has a recording of the battle against the Gnosis on board the Voglinda. If we enter that as evidence... Problem is, we have to find a way to access Cosmos right now. We have one! We do! There's a way! There is? Seriously? Captain, do you know of any way we can gain access to the Foundation City area? Let's see. Uh -huh. That'll open up any locked doors you will come across. I'll just say I was careless and you got a hold of it. To make it look legitimate, you'll need to knock me out. Me and... It would raise too many questions if the chairman of the Foundation escaped with the rest of you. So I guess I'll have to join the captain. You sure about this? If we do otherwise, no one would believe it, right? You have a point. But please, go easy, huh? Same for me. Thanks. Forgive me. You're pretty cool. Thank you. Huh? Ah! 
Ornst. Lester, I swear I won't let these scumbags use your desk for their own gain. Don't get too worked up, okay? There's an eggs hanger you can get to from the next block. Go get one. And stay cool. All right. The 100 series prototype has escaped? Yes. We think she's hiding in one of the Foundation City areas, along with the survivors from the Voglinde. Our offensive program has been deployed to the UMN, is that correct? Correct. Very well. Then I guess I'll go to the Foundation myself. Prepare my ES Issachar! Hmm. Some of the details are a bit complicated for me to understand, but I basically get what you're saying. Which is... You once gotten me to give you all a hand, is that pretty much it? That's right, Professor. As you can see, my friends and I are in desperate need of your fierce determination and fiery intellect. I don't get it. Just what kind of facility is this place? Huh? I'm sorry, but it's not registered in my database either. What power? I just don't see how an old man can help us out here. Cosmos was taken by Federation Marines. How's this guy gonna go up against them? Well, all you guys want is to hack a database. And then you want a copy of all the data, right? It's not like we have to physically jump into it or anything, you know? This is so easy. Now hold on. We're talking about infiltrating a database with AAA security encryption. This is no ordinary... Huh? You mean you can't do it? Uh, I... Well, well that's kind of sad. Professor, the systems they're used to sound pretty rickety, sir. You're telling me? All right, then. I suppose you can't access secret military data. Next, you tell me you can't access records from closed-door Federation meetings. Huh? And you mean you can? See? Like I said, these two aren't exactly normal. Hey, Alan. When did you find time to make friends with geniuses like these two? Well, you see, after I passed out the other night, they kind of cleaned up after me, you know. I mean, it was nothing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is most excellent. Just like my younger days, it just ain't science without a pretty girl guinea pig. You said it. Oh, yeah. Uh, guinea pig? UMN, the acronym for Unus Mundus Network, an information network that spans the entire universe. Its very non-locality makes it very useful for space jumps, and it also enables faster-than-light communications. I have to admit, I'm a little nervous about the Professor's invention. I'm here for you no matter what happens, so you can just relax. Good. I'm counting on you. Normally, this kind of thing isn't a job for a civilian. You just leave it to me. I'll bring back the truth about what happened. For all of our friends. Everything is going to be just fine. We should all have faith in Shion. <laughs> Everything is going to be just fine. Good luck. Okay, I'm now opening the interconnection. What's that? Hey, Momo! Junior! What happened to them? It's all right. Huh? All of them went with Xion when she went out from here. To Cosmos's inner consciousness. But Chaos, just... how do you know that? Professor, if you'd be so kind, please assist them with their dive. And... I'd very much like to borrow a module for myself. Ah! Everyone, please calm down! <laughs> Professor! What's happening to us? <laughs> well... My original super dive module works more efficiently than even I expected. So, uh, it made everyone dive together. That's impossible! Is this what you call diving, Professor? Come now, there's nothing to be worried about. The great thing about this system is that it has the flexibility to let you alter various parameters using your own imaginations. So how about it? Use those imaginations to create your own environment! You mean, you want us to wish for it? That's it?
I've never seen a system so versatile. Oh, please. You're not going to tell me you bought that old man's half-assed explanation. If you're going to deride us for buying it, then you must have a better explanation of your own. You don't have to be so tough. <sighs> Do you know what I believe in? I believe in Alan, who has always supported me. And I believe that Syncephalon is connected to Cosmos. That's what I believe in. Thank you. Fine. There's no other choice then. That's right! Chief, we're short on time. Follow my directions and I'll guide you to Cosmos. Okay. <gasps> hey, what happened? Alan, this is very critical. Someone's deploying an offensive program. Don't you worry, my dear. You're inside a field where your imaginations can change anything you wish. Go ahead, try that ultimate attack you've always dreamed about unleashing. You'll defeat that program in a heartbeat. Anything? Let's see, an ultimate attack. <laughs> this sounds like tons of fun. Be careful. How about something like this move? Storm! I guess there's no harm in trying. Meteor shot! How is it possible? Don't let down your guard! <laughs> A stronger program is approaching! She's not half bad. Well, she doesn't look it, but she's from a martial arts family. What do you mean I don't look it? A powerful lightning fist! How long has it been, Chaos? 
Fourteen years? You haven't changed at all since that day we met on the battlefield. You're an unusual person. And I see that on the inside, you remain just the same as ever, Captain. Not at all. I've been tarnished by the filth of this world, unfortunately. Anyway, let's get down to business. Judging from this sudden contact, I presume you have an urgent matter for me? I see. I hope my sister hasn't caused you any trouble. No, Xion's a good friend. Even as I speak to you now, she's fighting to save the Kukai Foundation. Yes, I understand. It seems I can no longer live the peaceful and unremarkable life of a used bookseller. into the Encephalon to gain access to Cosmos's database. I did it in order to prove our innocence in the Voglinda battle. I think I was attacked after that, but... It's no good. I can't remember. Am I still in the Encephalon's virtual world? with your father. Dad. I've been waiting a long time for you. We have very much to talk about. Waiting for me? What do you mean? I've seen you before. I have. Aboard the Voglinda. My name is Nephilim. That's what I've been called. Ever since I existed in this form you now see me in. But who are you exactly? I oversee the flow of time. I'm a moderator. I don't understand. The flow of time? I've waited such a long time. I've waited patiently for the day my voice could finally reach you. this place? Yeah, I do. If this isn't some kind of terrible illusion, this is Milsha, 14 years ago. The time of the Milshan conflict? That's right. Which means after this. Junior! We can't let him go uh off alone. Right here. Are you all right? 
Junior? <sighs> it's nothing, okay? Junior, do you know who Rubido is? I said it was nothing, didn't I? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't mean... Damn it. What the hell is this? What's going on here? So... You're saying this really is Milsha, aren't you? Yes. You see, a world of unbroken memory slumbers at the depths of your consciousness. Cosmos has sensed this and recreated it for you. Because this world, it is Cosmos's memory as well. It can't be Cosmos's memory. That's not possible. Memories don't belong solely to one person. And they are not fixed to one location. I meant... That the original Cosmos was... Destroyed during that incident two years ago. And you lost someone dear to you as well. Joyful memories are one half of a whole. Only when they are combined together with the other half can your consciousness truly take form. So you see, you must accept the entirety of your memories. Accept them? All of my memories? That's correct. So you must return to Milsha once again. <sighs> Just how far are you planning to dive in there? Hey! What the hell happened to the people, Egghead? Well, uh... Honestly, even I don't understand. Damn it! And so we're just supposed to sit here and wait? I've got my hands full just tracking her. <whistles> Professor, I have an external interrupt. A what? You mean someone actually hacked my system? Boy, I'd like to find out what technique they use, I'll tell you. Tell you what, Scott. I'll handle the countermeasures. Can you do a trace route and get some specifics for me? Yeah, sure thing. Hey, this is... Alan, look! This is a close-range access. It's coming from near the Foundation. Not only have our mice escaped their traps, they're even trying to find a way to fight back. I'll have you know they're fighting for the honor of the valiant Voglinda crew. I won't let you interfere! What a pest! Issachar, deal with him in any manner you wish. Meanwhile, I'll dive into the Encephalon. to face them.
I am the infinite telemarade! I'm not an anti-existence! <laughs> I am the perfect chain! <laughs> There's no difference between illusion and reality. None at all. Therefore, this is no illusion. Yes. All of you must accept the entirety of your memories. But even so... You're the one that showed us all of this. But why? For what purpose? For the future. Future? The future of humans, non-humans, and all matter of living consciousness. I can only exist in this world of consciousness. I can only come into contact with the real world for a short time. That is why I called for all of you, so that the future may be changed. Changing? The future? Look, Milsha! anomaly that engulfed Milsha 14 years ago. Yes, I know. We URTVs were created to defeat the Udu retrovirus. But as a kind of anti-surge, destined to destroy one another. I abandoned that destiny. My mission. And Udu psychologically infected my comrades. Halby don't have no choice but to accept Udu. But I severed the neural link before I got too far. An escape synchronization. I abandoned him. I... Naiden and I are the only survivors. And so to ease the pain, I've been halting my growth for the past 14 years. I used... I used all my power just to save myself. Oh, Junior. Each one was my brother. I was their leader, and I should have protected them all from destruction. I abandoned them. I sacrificed them to save myself. That's what I did. That's the reason they're... That's enough now. I'm so sorry. That's enough, Junior. You've suffered this pain all by yourself in silence for the last 14 years. That's long enough, okay? Following the Milshin conflict, Udu became dormant for a short period of time. But... Isn't that... It's Cosmos! a vision of the future as it could be. In this scenario, Udu encounters Cosmos in the form she was meant to be. It's gonna wake up? The future is one of an infinite set of potential phenomena. But that does not mean that the future is already set. Time is vulnerable to external interference. Even the smallest of waves can spread throughout the whole. Phenomena change with every moment, just like a drifting wave. Are you saying we're that wave? Before it begins. That's why I wanted you to face your pasts. However, I'm sorry I made you all suffer. But why does it have to be us? There will be a time when I can discuss that. But before that, you must return to Milsha, the place it all began. No, wait! Proceed, Shion. Please, Cosmos is waiting for you. Cosmos? Then let's get going. This is what we all came here for, isn't it? Uh, there's gotta be something I can do about this. I never imagined something like this could happen behind such strong defenses. 
Nevertheless, I can't overlook such a threat to Plan 401. May I ask you to draw your weapon? Who's there? It's been a long time, Pellegree. It can't be. Jin Uzuki? The last time I had this pleasure was on Milsha 14 years ago. Oh, thank goodness. You survived. Of course. It's only to be expected. I never believed you were dead, despite the many rumors. And I knew that if you were still alive, you'd find a way to stand in my or Commander Margulies's way again. It's who you are, Jin. And you haven't changed either. Still at the beck and call of that old jackal, are you? Just shut up! You can't resent me for that. You're the one who was supposed to support him, not me. It comes to this. Bastard! on time. failed, nonetheless. But that will lead to a most terrible awakening. Can't you understand that, Jin? Well, I guess she got away. Now, you really didn't want to kill her, did you, Captain? Stop calling me Captain already. Oh yeah, that's right. I wonder if she was able to do what must be done. Being that she's your sister, she'll do fine. I've been thinking. This amounts to something of an unofficial reunion via the UMN, though I'm sure our real paths will cross again in the future. And when that time comes... You don't want Xi'an to know we fought side by side and known each other for 14 years. Am I right? You're exactly right. I look forward to it, though. I'm sure that day will come very soon. be as gods. Password is accepted. Now disarming subconscious domain protection. Tomorrow, Cosmos is finally going to wake up. I'm looking forward to seeing her come to life. But I have no idea what to say to her when she does. That's easy, Kevin. What? When someone wakes up, you say... Good morning, Cosmos. And a good morning to you, Xion. Please, accept my memories. I present to you the memory bank data from the Anti-Gnosis Humanoid Weapon System KPX Cosmos. Secured at protection level AAA, with no possibility of alteration. Memory bank data accepted. Please remain within the Milshan Star System until you're cleared of all charges. Yes, ma'am. I'll tell you what, it sure brought back a lot of bad memories. like you can rest in peace finally. I owe those kids more than a toast.
you. Rubino, don't forget me. Don't forget me because I'm coming back, Rubino. Do you hear me? I will make you never leave me, Rubino. Rubino! <laughs> What's wrong? Show me a smile. Are you worried about me? Is that it? Is that the case? Huh? My little Kirschwasser mimics kindness? Is that one of the previously unknown functions of an observational realian? It's not a function. It's my own... will. <laughs> what an artificial personality. Is this how you deceived all the men in your life until now? Soon I'll prepare a proper stage for you. You can perform your little act there. I have one, don't I? Right, Shion? Well, of my own. Very soon, Rubedo. I'll make good on the promise I made to you. <laughs> Do you hear me? I will make you never leave me, Rubedo! <laughs> We couldn't have done it without you, sir. And please pass along my thanks to Captain Roman. However, I doubt the UTIC organization is going to stand by and do nothing about this. Better be careful. That's where we stand. You'll have to look after Momo now, you know. Yeah, you don't have to tell me that. What's wrong? Does it still hurt? It really aches. I can feel Albedo's heartbeat now. You still believe, don't you? No, it's not a belief. Albedo isn't dead. I know that in my heart. I feel it. He's alive. How can you know that? He disappeared 14 years ago when we were back on Milsha. Since then, there's been no sign of him whatsoever. If he's alive, why hasn't he ever come to us? I don't know. Even back then, we never really knew what he was thinking. But I can tell you, he's getting close now. I know that much. And soon, the time will come when I'm going to have to face my past. I know it was an emergency, but I still handed over top-secret company info to the Federation without permission. I am so fired. The Milshan conflict broke out back home 14 years ago. Junior lost his brother on the same planet I lost my mother and father. We share that sadness in common, don't we? Junior's loss hurt him so much that he stunted his own growth. He and Guinan created the Kukai Foundation together, all in order to resist the Utik organization. But the UTIC organization still lives. And maybe they're after Cosmos, too.
Cosmos and I, Junior and Gainan, Momo and Ziggy, Chaos. All of us are connected to Milsha. There will be a time when I can discuss that. But before that, you must return to Milsha, the place it all began. If you do that... Nephilim, Cosmos, and Udu. Before it begins, for that reason, I wanted you to face your past. hasn't left her room. She's gone through a lot lately. I tried all I could, but I couldn't get her to come out. She's probably crying all alone again. It's times like these when I'm reminded that I'm nothing but a subordinate to her. I... I wish I could take her tears away. Maybe someday. You will, Alan. I have no doubt. Easy for you. You don't know a thing about us when it comes down to it. Oh, I I'm sorry. I, I just... I, I really didn't mean to say that. We've only known each other for a short while, but I do like you, Alan. An emotional slip of the tongue won't change that. You're too nice. You know that? Kindness. At times, it binds people together. But still... So then we'll hear it. <laughs> A legendary song. I can't wait. <laughs> oh no. Huh? Uh. What? Chaos? That song you hear? We can't allow it to be sung. Hey, that's... The Song of Nephilim. number of Gnosis gating out on top of us. It's the Song of Nephilim. That's what called the Gnosis to us. The Gnosis are set to reach the Foundation in 240 seconds. Oh no! We gotta send more eggs into the middle of this! We'll counter with photon torpedoes. Tubes 1 through 500 are loaded and ready to fire. Open fire! Third egg squadron has taken casualties. Starboard defense is down. There's no response from six and seven squadrons. About 3,000 doses approaching at 12 o'clock. Oh shoot, there's too many. 
Sir, we should evacuate the civilians. If all else fails, we may have to abandon the Foundation. Is that acceptable? <laughs> Affirmative. Evacuate all civilians into the Durandal immediately. Order acknowledged. I'll send out the announcement right now. Attention, all Foundation civilians. The Gnosis have appeared in the immediate vicinity. All personnel, board shuttle, and evacuate to the Durandal without delay. I repeat, the Gnosis have appeared in the immediate vicinity. <gasps> all personnel... <laughs> Board shuttle and evacuate to the Durandal without delay. The shuttle can't take on any more passengers at this time. Another one will be leaving in 90 minutes. We have plenty of time. Please remain calm and await your turn. <laughs> Bastards found us. Push him back! Don't let a single one get through! The amplifier was damaged. The range of the Hilbert effect is down to less than 20 meters. This is bad. They'll get through the walls. of Gnosis sighted in Colony Precinct 32. They've also penetrated Precincts 18 and 27. Where are you going? Where else? I'm getting into my eggs. When a commander abandons his post, it creates confusion. Well, the egg squadrons have their hands full, and they need all the help they can get. As long as you're being reckless. Hi, guys. I'll help with the evacuation too, okay? Uh, then I'll just... I'll find something to do! You damn freaks! You just don't know when to quit! This time you learned you can't keep pushing us around! God horns! Damn! Uh, they just keep coming! Uh, hey! What the hell are they doing? We need you, Cosmos. Only you can do a wide range Hilbert effect. Without an amplifier, at least. I understand, Xi'an. Activate Wide Range Hilbert Effect! That is affirmative. Activating Wide Range Hilbert Effect. Cosmos, you were created to save human beings from the Gnosis. It's your sole purpose. Understood, Xion. Good, then it's time to show what you can do. Commence anti-gnosis combat with no weapons restrictions. But don't damage the colony's outer walls. Order acknowledged. Now get in there, Cosmos! <laughs> You're always impressive. But when they can be hit, I'm not too bad myself! Hey! Maria, get in! Go uh, on ahead! Wait there! I'll come back for you soon! Right. I hope Xion feels better. Well, 
This is no time to be down in the dumps, I'll tell you that much. Hi, Junior! Momo! It's dangerous here! I'm making sure no one gets left behind! Hey, come back! Back off! should be complete by now. There's no reason to stick around. Hello there! Has anyone not been evacuated yet? Who's that? Hello? No one here. Oh, good. Hey! What are her vitals? She just passed out. Damn realians. A large number of targets and it will take some time to eliminate them however it seems there are no remaining civilians here then the evacuation is complete when the time is right fall back okay i understand Xion. <laughs> what now you're out here wandering around lieutenant virgil guess i'll get us out of here you take care of her lady momo but why? She stayed behind and performed the duty she was built for. When I found her, she was making sure all civilians had been evacuated. No, I meant you and Reallian, sir. Yeah, I know. But I haven't always been like that, all right? Stick close. I'll open up an escape room. Uh, okay. Uh. Oh, no! I'll take care of them. Just hurry up and go! Come on! Wait, Lieutenant! Xion, please get down now. Cosmos! Escape is the highest priority, Xion. I will secure a retreat for you. along the fake Kirschwasser. That voice! <laughs> Albino! <laughs> Rubito, eh? Just as I thought. 
I knew there was no way you could be dead! <laughs> Don't get so worked up, Ruby Doe. Please, don't. You've got a soft spot for my pish, don't you? Like before, you're the same. <laughs> no, Vito! I'll be waiting for you, Rubito. No, Vito! I'll wait at the place you abandoned me, and this time I'll make sure you never forget! No, Vito! This time, Rubido. I'll imprint myself inside you. I have secured an escape route for you. Cosmos, I know what your intentions were, but do you understand what you've just done? My assigned primary directive is the protection of Vector employees. Therefore, your safety is of the utmost importance. My assigned additional task is to aid in the evacuation of Foundation civilians. Now both of these have been accomplished without incident. That's not what I'm asking. Why did you open fire on the Lieutenant? With your power, you didn't have to sacrifice him to do this! But unfortunately, the Lieutenant was in my direct line of fire at the critical moment. The death of the Lieutenant results in less than a 20% drop in our offensive capability. With the evacuation of all civilians complete, I simply chose the best option that was available. The one with the highest probability of keeping you alive. I'm sorry, Cosmos, but I wanted to believe that you were developing emotions like my own. But, Xion... I am not human like you. I am merely a weapon. You of all people should be aware of that fact. We should make our escape now, Xion. If you wish to express remorse for the Lieutenant's death, then it is best that you survive. Otherwise, you will render his death meaningless. Ace teams have re-established the second defense line. Current status can be maintained for at least 500 seconds. Gnosis materialization is reaching its highest levels. The center of activity is... The Foundation! What about the Zohars in our hangars? They're in stasis. Attract inhibitor output is normal. So, if the Zohar emulators on the Durandal aren't calling the Gnosis, then they're... What's the Foundation's current status? The evacuation of all civilians is complete. Most of the Gnosis that made it inside have been eliminated. However... It appears that Lieutenant Virgil was killed in action. Oh, I should express condolences on behalf of our grateful citizens. Is there any sign of Momo's location? We have no current reading. She was last seen surrounded by Gnosis. Damn it! It was Albedo! <laughs> Who could have foreseen that his great anger and hatred would come back at us like this? What exactly do you mean by that? Are you alright? I'm fine. Who is Albedo? Or what is he? He's my dark half. The part of me I abandoned a long time ago. Dark half? I'd have thought you'd learned all about the URTVs, the designer children while in the Encephalon. 
Master Guinan. No, it's okay. Let him speak. At the time of the Milsham conflict, 669 of us had been produced. Since then, the only confirmed survivors have been Junior and myself. Until now. I understand. That makes him a third survivor. But why would he be after Momo now? Because she's the repository for the late Joachim Mizrahi's important records. Albido and the Utic organization want that information. They've wanted it for a long time. But that's not all, Guinan. Albido also knows about Sakura, and he knows what Sakura asked me to do. If only... If only I hadn't met Momo. No, that's not true! I must apologize for leaving my post, ma'am. No, it's all right. As you know, Sakura was Joachim Mizrahi's daughter, as well as the model for the 100 series Realians. Joachim Mizrahi's daughter? She never had the opportunity to meet us, but we have been told she always referred to us as her sisters. Look after my mom and my sisters for me. That's what... That's what Sakura said to me. I understand. Ever since I was assigned to this mission, I've sensed an unseen power sending us strength from the shadows. Do you think that was because of Sakura? To be honest, I didn't want to meet her. I didn't want to involve her in our problems, but now it looks like that's all been in vain. Oh, little master, you've done such a good job looking out for us for such a long time now. I'm sure Sakura would be happy with all you've done. And you know what? Momo would as well. It's true, Junior. Thanks, guys. <laughs> oh, what's going on now? I'm picking up another fleet of Gnosis. They're gating out at 0973. Approximate number, 120,000. <laughs> Dispatch an eggs platoon now. There's no use for that. We're leaving the Foundation. We'll take the Durandal and go. Picking up a dimensional distortion at 2005. A gate is opening. Another one? It's a very large gate, a diameter of 1,000 kilometers. The fleet of Gnosis has taken a direct hit. 40,000 units were destroyed. I have a new reading. An enormous mass is gaining out. How, how can that be here? It's... it's the Tamarang. for which we, the experimental models, were the base. My name's Momo, and so you must be one of my sisters. Sakura. Soon, soon you will be born into this world, and you must do many good deeds. If you do this, if you do this, you can become human. More than that, you can become my Sakura. I see. Is that your memory? Yes, it is. It was always you he looked at. Now I understand. You must be a 99 series unit born just before me. 
You see, from the moment I became alive, nobody ever looked at me, Momo. I see that some ridiculous little doll is trying to break my toy. Who told you you could do that? Please don't hurt her! <laughs> such tears shed for another, such beauty they hold. They are surely the most precious substance in the world. However, are you worthy to shed such tears? Feeling empathy for the weak belongs solely to the realm of humans. How dare you! But still, are you worth being called human? You wish to be human, and yet you weren't even born from a woman's womb! That's the mobile headquarters for Vector Industries. So it's really true? The Rhine Maiden is operational. Over 50,000 Gnosis have been eliminated. Incoming message. The Damarong requests Miss Uzuki. They want me? Put them on stream. <coughs> is that Tagashi? I can't believe you're alive! I really should be the one who's saying that, Vice Chief. Ever since I made it back to HQ in One Piece, all of the engineering staff has been praying that you two guys were okay and finally hooking up. Hooking okay, what up? Oh, hey, anyway, by the way, what's the Damarong doing here, Tagashi? It was Chairman Wilhelm's decision. We've been ordered to work with the Second Division and give Cosmos our full support. Second Division? Are we going to test a new weapon or something? Yeah, give me a sec. I'll send it right over. S send it over? Where? It's here! Hey, Tagashi, isn't this a... According to the data we've just received, Chief, there's some type of force field concentrated near here. That explains it. The force field must be attracting the Gnosis. That's what we're thinking on this end. And the observational guys said there's a good chance it's man-made. So, if we link up the Dameron's mainframe with Cosmos' DSSS sensor... We can find it! We'll be able to find out where it's hiding! Not so much find it as open up the warp in the surrounding space and be able to drag whatever it is out of hiding. You vector guys are totally awesome! You make it sound like it's no big deal, but do you know what you're saying? Of course. What's he saying? Look here. The weapon in this case is loaded with a PT phase transfer cartridge. If it's not handled properly, it... it could vaporize the entire Milshin star system. The human race, fearful of its own weakness, built this world in a futile attempt to escape the abyss it calls mortality. And even so, little you exists as an unfettered soul, free from the shackles of the flesh. A pure consciousness, an eternal spiral, undefiled by impurities, a fusion of fire, breath, and spirit. In which case, what choice do we have but to call you an angel? <laughs> Bang! <laughs> You thought I'd shoot? I would never waste a shot on a pathetic weakling like you. So instead, I think I'll do this. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, come, my Belpesh. There's no need to tremble so. <laughs> Junior? <laughs> Who is Junior? 
Ah, Rubido. <laughs> <laughs> No, please, go ahead. Think about your beloved some more. Oh, no! Please stop it! Get out of my body! Please help me, too. Would you look at me? Listen, Cosmos. The PT cannon's been contracted down to Plank scale. Just follow normal procedures to expand it. I understand, Alan. PT cartridge expansion successful. No deficiencies detected in the structural integrity of the weapon. It's a weapon that causes a localized phase transition and destroys everything within range. Like the Chief said, the effect is local, but it's important to keep in mind that it's powerful enough to destroy an entire planet. By limiting the phase transfer mass, I can activate the device without impacting the surrounding area. Not even the Rhine Maiden can keep firing forever, guys. We can handle the Gnosis, but hurry up and find out what's causing this. Yeah, you got it. Come on, let's do it! Okay. Don't do it. Huh? Do you have any idea what you're doing? She's only a weapon. She isn't fighting because she chooses to do so. She carries out orders as efficiently as she can, regardless of consequences. But, Chief... See, I'm not opposed to taking down the Gnosis or finding out what's causing this. But we have no way of knowing what we'll sacrifice next if we let her carry out the mission this way. Look, Xion. Lieutenant Virgil was just... Xion! Listen to me. Momo's being held captive. She's in there somewhere. Go ahead and call me selfish, but I really don't care. I want her back. And I honestly don't care what we have to sacrifice in order to make that happen. Momo... Xion, your conclusions are not in error. I was indeed built as a weapon in order to fight the Gnosis. As such, it is my purpose to carry out my orders without hesitation or doubt. What if... What if you were given two different sets of orders to carry out that completely contradicted each other? I would resolve the contradiction. That is an integral component of my programming. What's the matter? Listen, Cosmos. Yes? I'm not saying that I forgive you, or even that I trust you. But I leave this up to you. Use the PT cannon, but make sure that not a single person dies. Order acknowledged. Cosmos, keep the transfer mass as low as possible. Yes, I am setting the transfer mass to 0.11 MPT. Transfer time set to 4.8 times 10 to the negative 38th. Bypass between D triple S and mainframe secured. Opening multi directional scan. All functions operational. Distortion detected at direction 8018 near the UMN structure. It is currently emitting a weak column pulse. That must be it! Gnosis gate out detected at 8815! A large group of Gnosis appeared directly ahead. Probability of securing a line of fire is 17.42%. Hey, wait a second! If we hit the Gnosis like this, there's gonna be unexpected phase transfers! I'm leaving the timing of the shot in your hands, Cosmos. You must use all of your capabilities to secure a direct line of fire, do you understand? Failure is not an option. You can't be serious about this! Orders acknowledged. Line of fire secured. Phase transfer cannon ready. Firing! Line of fire secured. Phase transfer cannon ready. Firing! What's happening? Something's gone wrong. This is... It's the remaining Gnosis! They're all being absorbed! Oh, that light! It's just like when Cosmos...
They found us much earlier than I expected. I suppose I should hurry and find that key. The one that lies sleeping somewhere inside of you. No, stop it! The Proto Merkaba was Joachim Mizrahi's research plan. You mean it wasn't dropped into the abyss all those years ago along with Old Milsha? Old Milsha? What do you mean? It's something Mizrahi tried 14 years ago. He linked the original Zohar with the Song of Nephilim emitter. Then he linked them both to the Proto Merkaba. The result of that experiment was the Gnosis being brought into this world. For that, he's called a murderer. The 100 series prototype! I have Momo tracked and located. She's in the middle of the distortion caused by the phase transfer. Inside the Proto Merkaba? Junior, get this ship closer to that thing. Huh? It isn't necessary to get too close. Just lending me a shuttle will be enough. Hold it! I said hold it! You don't have to tell me what to do, you understand that? I'm going to save Momo. Sorry, but this one isn't your fight. Please. Don't bother. What did you say? When someone very close to you is in danger, you lose your objectivity. And after that, it always ends in tragedy. Yeah, well, that's really something. So you're playing the hardened soldier now, Ziggy? Tell me this, then. How can I become cold and detached like you, huh? By thinking of nothing but numbers and battle strategy. Don't let your mind wander to the faces or voices of those precious to you, even when it seems cruel not to. Too intense of an interference will ruin everything. So there you are. That's what the last hundred years have taught me. The day numbers and battle strategies replace people, it'll be game over, cyborg. Captain, I'm sorry, but you gotta get off this ship. I'm buying the Elsa from you and taking it out. There's someplace else I gotta go, and I gotta go alone. Well, I guess it's not out of the question. You can come up with a good price. But I can't even talk about this until we finish our current gig. Maybe later. Come on! How can you do some side job at a time like this? You forgot already? I got a big time transport job to do. I gotta drop Ziggy and Momo on second Milsha. That's a job you hired me for. Ugh, Captain? What now? Look, Junior, each of us is here for different reasons. Circumstances brought us together. But we all feel the same way. Junior, you must remember to stay focused, no matter what he does to Momo. That's the only way you can save her. Some advice from your elder. <laughs> okay, you win. Sorry to pull you into my personal issues, but I could use your help. Hey, no worries here. You never pass up the chance to get a little hazard pay, do you? Try to act all noble. I'm on to you. Bastard! Can't you let me look cool every once in a while, you prick? <laughs> Okay, let's go. Momo's waiting for us. Let's head for Proto Merkaba. Kicking Logic Drive up to maximum! Here we go! I can't help wondering if Cosmos acts on pure logic again. No, there's no time to worry about that. We got no I thought they were all absorbed in the phase transfer! Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah! Gonna go right at him! Ha! Ah, I feel the burn! Let's crank this sucker up! And there, ladies and gentlemen, is our own resident geek. Egg Squadron! Launch an immediate flanking attack against the Gnosis! Annihilated, just like that. No, it can't be.